and welcome back to the ongoing story with the Love Doctor. <laughs> this is Barry Selby, known as the Love Doctor as friends and the heartbreak repair specialist to my clients. Um, I'm a number one best-selling author of the book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. You can find out more about me and my work and my site, which is easy to remember because it is barryselby.com. All right, let's get to some uh, details. Um, I'm just going to just do a quick scan to see the skyline along LA. This is kind of a uh, been a muggy day, but it's not bad. Anyway, I'm going to just go back and do this because I'm because frankly I'm squinting the other way around. So let's do it this way around. Thank you for joining me. You know, feel free to give me lots of hearts. Bring your friends. Invite all the Twitter followers to come join me. So I'm going to talk about polarity. And I'll get into what that means in a second um, because I've seen some posts today on social media. Should I bring it down a bit like that? Okay. I've seen some posts on social media, um, particularly today, about women being empowered and men doing other things and women letting men lead and stuff like that. And I want to get to the core issue or core conversation about polarity. And this has been my own area of study for the last nine years with some powerful teachers who I recommend everybody go study with. I'll mention them. Actually, I'll mention them now. Particularly two that I really recommend. David Data, D-E-I-D-A, out in upstate New York, has a major teaching work he does, and one of his books changed my life. That's the way of the superior man. The other one I recommend highly is Alison Armstrong, particularly for the women, because she speaks to the feminine more powerfully in that way too. But together, those two teachings blend for me. And that's why I want to speak about this work, and it's what I do in my own work. So polarity. It is kind of like the idea of magnets that have a north and south pole. And in the same sense, the masculine and feminine polarity in our genders, although not necessarily aligned that way, generally men are more masculine, women are more feminine. So that's the norm. However, some men are more feminine than masculine. Straight or gay doesn't mean their sexual preference changes. And some women are more masculine than feminine based upon their polarity in the way they are. So that's what I mean as polarity. It's that masculine or feminine um, residence we live in, in our physical bodies. So in there may be a man or a woman, gay or straight, we may have, in fact, we normally do have a blend of both. Very few people are 100% one, 100% the other, We're usually a multiple, sorry, a um, addition, that's the way I put it, simple math, a combination of both. So in my own instance, I was spending more time in the feminine and heart relationship because I was doing a lot of spiritual work and heart opening work that is feminine energy. Definitely straight, I'll own that one very clearly, but I kept drawing to myself powerful women who are in the masculine because they switch roles to be in the world of comp- competitive business. And this is the thing that we're facing right now is there's a crisis happening. There are so many women who have been trained by the model in society and by those around them that they're to succeed in the business world by being like men. And it's messed up and their, their relationships and they've suffered because of it. And one of my friends, um, Jenna, posted a video today about how powerful women need to let men take the lead, which I totally agree with, with some caveats. Because I don't want to get the whole story, well, I could, but it'll take forever. And I've got it in my book and in my work, and if you want to find out more about how I explain it, I'll tell you another time. But simple steps is we came out of previous generations in the 50s and 60s where the men were the macho men. We were getting things done, breadwinners, taking things, you know, getting, getting things done, And we were like running the house. We ran the world. And the women were more the meek housewife. But then in the 60s, there was a shift. It was actually the second um, stage of the feminist movement in some ways. Because that's when the sexual revolution happened. You know, the first first wave was when women were um, emancipated and got the right to vote in the suffragette movement back in the 1900s, around then. The second wave was the changed during the 60s or so when the sexual revolution happened. Women got the idea they can imagine was if women is a, sorry, in England it was a women's liberation movement. But over here and over there, there was a big shift in the culture. Women went to work. So they burned their bras, cut their hair, took out their makeup, put on suits and went to work. Whereas the men in the 60s, particularly because of the Vietnam War and other things happening over here, tended to drop out, as it were. They, they grew their hair long, smoked weed, bell-bottom pants. I mean, it was a very feminine energy for men to take on. And what was happening was this ping-pong effect happening where the men and women were sort of switching roles slightly and then coming back into balance. Now, in the work I talk about this, the evolution of three stages of relationship. The first stage is the um, 
the codependent form, which is what my parents and many gener that generation had, where the man was a breadwinner, woman was a stay-at-home housewife, she raised the kids, he went to work. Usually um, they were very codependent, they couldn't do that. He texts me, says he likes me, but will not make a move. Well, if he's not making a move, you need to move on, to be very blunt about that. Um, I'll give you a whole another conversation on that piece, but I'll save one for another conversation. But yeah, if you have any questions or comments about this, please post them and feel free to give the hearts. And please, again, invite your friends and followers. This is a big topic I'm trying to cram into a few minutes. So I'm just giving you the highlights and you may not get everything. And I apologize if that's the case. This may open up a whole range of scopes I'll do on this subject matter because there's a lot to this conversation. So I mentioned stage one and stage two. Stage one being the macho stage for the men and the meek housewife, which was the codependent stage. Then in the 70s and 80s was what's called the independent stage, the way I describe it where men and women were separate. Women at this point were earning their own wage, they were working, they drove their own cars, had their own apartments, had their own bank accounts, so relationships were on an equal footing in a sense, because they were negotiated. It wasn't exactly exciting and polarity-wise, but it was definitely healthier than it was before. Now comes stage three, which I'm very passionate about in my work, and that's where the polarity comes into play. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning of this scope, polarity is the masculine, feminine, um, spectrum that we each can embody to different degrees. For some of us, we live very much into the masculine side. Some of us live very into the feminine side. Some of us are near the middle. Um, just so you understand this, the more there is a um, reciprocal relationship attachment, sorry, reciprocal polarity investment, then the more there'll be a chemistry relation, which is that sexual connection. So that means somebody who's a 50-50, 50% masculine, 50% feminine, it's going to be energetically and sexually androgynous. They won't have much attachment to it. And somebody who's 100% one or the other will probably have some psychological issues too because that's very, very rare and not very healthy. We all carry a percentage of one and one of the other. So in my case, I run around, which I didn't finish earlier, um, I tend to run around 75%, 80% masculine, 20, 25% feminine. In my coaching work, I tend to spend more time in the feminine because my counsel work with women is to hold them safe in a very safe place but with heart which is more of a feminine energy. But it's not something I control, it's automatic, which is true of all of us. But the, tree, the key thing is, is knowing where you stand and then knowing what you're attracted to, and some of that's gonna be automatic, some of it's gonna be your um, choice, I'll put it that way. But let me go back to finish the, I'm running out four threads here, so please bear with me as I bounce back and forward in the different topics. So, third stage, relationship. This is what I call and what I've been taught by some of my teachers, the full embodiment of the warrior and the goddess in one sense, or the king and the queen, or the queen and the hero. There's different ways of putting it in different teachings. But what it fully means is that men own their masculine strength, not the macho, which back in the first stage was really the, uh, the cojones-driven guy, the big balls and take my way, the highway, closed heart, get things done, succeed, finish. The masculine man is one who is living in his purpose, his mission. He's driven by a direction and clarity, which is the ma which actually is this spine focus, like backbone focus where we're going with an open heart because of compassion for the world. A truly masculine man is one who's getting things done for the sake of everybody. A legacy is a focus like that. In my work, I'm very passionate about my work and it's living on a mission and a purpose that is more than who we are. That's the masculine signature. The feminine is amazing. <laughs> I'll put it that way. A true woman of feminine, and I've talked about this in one of my other videos, I think, or a, no, I think it was a radio interview, how there was this sudden excitement very recently in the last few years where women discovered the goddess movement, which I love and applaud. But it doesn't stop there. The goddess movement that's, that's sort of been the first wave has been this um, Excitement for women to learn they can have feminine ways and it's a first stage and what I mean is they have learned how to sort of soften themselves and they, they go barefoot on the beach running around under the moonlight and they wear their silks and I'm being sarcastic so please be, don't, don't shoot me down for that but it's kind of the, the signature of that. I believe in what I'm inviting and what I encourage with my clients is the second stage into the feminine. It's a subset I know. But the second stage of the feminine is the woman who is in her softness but she carries a sword. And I mean she's basically like a warrior goddess. She has this softness and this beautiful spirit that is flowing and it's in the freedom of life. But she doesn't take any crap. And she's here to make a difference too. Because the true essence of the fully developed masculine 
and the fullness of the fully developed feminine is side by side. And this is what I'm creating in my own relationship and also what I'm encouraging all my clients to do because this is the future of the planet. At least that's what I'm holding for, my vision of the future. And as we step forward into that, it's going to require a whole different paradigm. If you watch what's happening in the Western world in the government, it's a very old format, macho format. The, the women who are in government mostly are being the same as the men except they wear skirts. And it's not healthy for our culture or for our race. And the human race needs to have authentic living as a priority. One of my core values is authenticity, which sometimes is hard to do. But I come back to it as much as I can. So I'm just making sure I didn't miss any points. I'm trying to tie all the knots together because it was a very, it started as a simple topic and it expanded beyond my control and I'm putting it back into the box. Um, I think I've covered everything so far. Any questions or any thoughts you have that come up that you might ask that I can answer too that might give me any completion because I don't have a, a piece I can come up with now. It seems that that is the, uh, the topic and it's not shell. Again, this is a broad strokes overview of this topic and I just meant to start with one thing and expand it much quicker. I will come back to this in a later um, scope that is much more detailed and break it down in several different pieces. Um, two things. One is if you want to find out about me, again, please go to my website, which is barryselby.com. I primarily work with women who want to really find love and heal their hearts because that's my passion. That's why I'm called the Heartbreak Repair Specialist. Two, second thing is you can watch my previous scopes because I've now discovered a site which I recommend highly if you do use Periscope is go to cat, sorry, go to catch.me with a K. K-A-T-C-H dot M-E forward slash Barry Selby is my scopes over the last three days. This is the fourth one that's going up shortly when it ends. Um, and please share this with your friends. And if you're interested in finding out more about the 30-day Periscope challenge I'm part of, um, message, message, message me, I'll say it in English, message me, you teeth, over Twitter and I'll send the information to you. Okay, thank you for watching this video and please share it with your friends in the replay form or on catch and I will do another one of these probably tomorrow. I'm attempting to do them about the same time, which is around 5.36 in the evening, although I heard feedback that I should do it earlier for the East Coast people, so we'll see. So I look forward to speaking to some of you and maybe more tomorrow. Thank you for joining me. And uh, if there's no more questions, I don't see any. I will see you then. Bye.